Hello everybody, uh, welcome to our project, the HENES, or the Hardware Emulated NES. The goal of this project is to play original NES cartridge, uh, cartridges with original NES controllers uh, via a hardware that is replicated on an FPGA. Um, so as you can see, uh, we have the game Golf uh, in here currently, uh, and it is uh, playable with uh, controller input. Um, and we have the ability to switch out the cartridge. So I'll go ahead and switch it to Super Mario Bros. here. Um, and as you can see here, we have uh, controller input. Um, and we're able to play Mario, uh, just like the kids back in 1985 did. Um, so if you want to come in and zoom in a little bit closer on the hardware here, um, at the top with the three LEDs, we have the power board, which supplies the 5 volts that the cartridge needs, as well as the 2.5 volts and the 1.2 volts that the FPGA needs. Um, that FPGA is in the center there. It's a 256 pin ball grid array um, that we broke out into headers. Uh, all the I.O. into headers. Uh, on the left is the VGA board, uh, which features a, uh, a, a DAC specifically meant for VGA. Uh, originally, the NES outputted uh, video audio using a component, uh, and, and VGA was the closest uh, modern analog. Um, uh, so we, we wrote a custom VGA module uh, to interface with that. Um, and then uh, to the right we have an audio board, which was one of our stretch goals, which unfortunately we did not end up have, uh, having time for. The center of our prototyping effort came with this DE10-like development board. It's got a Max 10 FPGA on it, which is very comparable to the FPGA on the board. We use it to develop not only the CPU, but also the video coprocessor and the VGA, as it's got a port on the side. To program this, we were using this proprietary USB blaster cable by Intel and we used a connector on it to interface with the header on our FPGA board, which is a bit smaller. And to prototype a couple of these components individually, we have this custom PCB here, and this just takes one of our game cartridges, it plugs into this, and these headers on the bottom are spaced out such that we can then plug this into a breadboard. And we use this to test this interfacing with this cartridge from the FPGA at a real clock speed by using level shifters, which translated between our 2.5 volt and our 5 volt logic. And we also tested on our dev board with the controller. So we took off the original NES controller cable and we put on these regular 2.5 millimeter pitch headers. Uh, and we use this to play games directly on the dev board, which allows it to, to test full functionality. And one of the quirks about this controller is like the rest of the NES, it originally runs at 5 volt logic. We tested it, and the chip inside of here is capable of running all the way down to two volt logic, and so that's how we're running it off of the GPIO on the dash. So this is kind of just how we've laid out our code here. We have our top level NES file, which contains all of the inputs and outputs exactly as it is on this cartridge on this um, FPGA. So we can just take this and program it on there. And then to interface with the dev board, we wrote an extra FPGA wrapper, which takes all the inputs and simulates the actual cartridge using a couple bi-directional buffers and built-in RAM. God damn. <laughs> Play for as long as you want, and then we can cut out everything except for the 20 seconds before you die. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.